I'm Julie Patterson of JCT Quilting and I want to help you turn your memories into quilted treasures. In this video I'm going to show you how I chain pieced a patchwork memory quilt. Chain piecing can be a very useful time-saving technique. Sometimes with chain piecing blocks we chain piece all our blocks which means we sew them just back to back without cutting the thread in between and then we take it out from under the presser foot and then we use a tool or our scissors to cut the blocks apart and then we might chain piece the next step. With this process, I'm not going to cut those threads. Once the rows or the columns are sewn together, I'm gonna to leave them together and continue to add to what I have without cutting those threads. So keep watching and I'll show you how to chain piece this patchwork memory quilt. I want a random layout for my patchwork, but I don't want it to be made randomly because I'm worried I'm gonna end up with all the same fabric on the bottom row. So I'm gonna start by organizing my fabric by color or by shirt, in this case I have five shirts, and then I'll lay it out in the desired way. I'm working in a small space so it's scrunched up, but this is my desired layout. I'm going to stack my fabrics in a specific way so that when I bring them to the sewing machine, I still know what's on the top, what's on the bottom, what's left, what's right. So the bottom row gets the bottom of the stack and the bottom on the far right is the first stack, or it will be the last stack to sew, the first stack to be stacked. So each column, I put the bottom row on the bottom and then I take each row above it and stack it on top. In my mind, the bottom row is equal to bottom of the pile and the far right is the last one to be sewn. So this stacking method just makes sense. So I'll keep following this pattern, stacking the bottom row on the bottom of the column and then I'll just keep stacking it so the top row is on the top of the pile and I will be left with the far left column is the top or the first one to be sewn. Now my rows and columns are stacked and I'm ready to go to my sewing machine. At the sewing machine, I leave them in their stacks. I pull off the top one, which remember is the far left column, and then the second one, which is the second from the left. I want to make sure that that far left column or the pile that was on the top gets sewn on the bottom, and then the second one gets sewn on the top of those pieces. So you'll see as I go through each piece, the far left, is going to be the bottom piece, and the second column is going to be the top piece. And then I will just piece them together. I do not cut this the thread in between. I just chain piece and keep going. You put a little bit of a gap, just a little bit, but not too much. You don't want those thread dogs to be sewing nothing in between the pieces. One or two stitches is fine, but that's about all you want in between the squares. I will keep sewing in this manner to sew the first two columns together. The first two columns are sewn together, so now it's time to sew the third column. Do not separate any of the threads, just leave it as is. Grab the next piece of fabric and sew it to the top of your chain piece strips. Remember, the top piece is the top row. And so by doing this, you will keep those top row fabrics together, and you can continue to sew and chain piece these together to finish sewing this third column to the first and second columns. Now we are ready for the fourth column. So open up what you have so far, attach the top piece from your pile of fabric, and then keep sewing as you've been doing to finish sewing all of the fabric for the rows together. Our rows are now pieced, and we're going to leave this together so that we can sew our rows together. When sewing rows together, I find that I don't need to iron to get these seams to nest. Also, I don't really want to iron because 
always ironing shirts. It's just not always a fun thing to do. You don't want to ruin the shirts or the stabilizer or any of that, so it's helpful to just do it without ironing. So to do that, I use a finger press. I just press my finger on the two seams and nest them. I line up the square and then I start stitching. I hold that nested seam together until I get the stitch on it. So once the needle hits that nested seam and kind of locks it in place, sometimes I'll use something to help me get that seam under there just to make sure it stays nested the whole time. Once that seam has been stitched, then I'll move to the next seam, use a finger press, and nest the next seam. Again, sometimes I'll use my fingers or a pen of some sort to help that nested seam get under the needle and stay intact the whole time. And then I move on to the next one. And I'll continue in this manner throughout this whole seam, holding the nested seam together until it gets stitched. Then I'll follow the same process for the next rows that need to be sewn together. I finger press the nested seam, make sure it's staying nested together, get the stitch on top of it to lock it in place, and then move on to finger press and nest the next seam. I will follow the same process until all the rows are sewn together. Now my quilt top is fully pieced. Now is when I will take the time to just iron it flat. I don't care which way the seams are going, I just want it as flat as possible for the borders or for my long arm, whatever I'm doing next. I hope this video is helpful for the next time that you want to chain piece your patchwork memory quilted treasure.